and begin the presentation. Hello, good morning to you all. I am Kataoka, responsible for ABU. Today, myself, Kataoka, and uh, from Dialogue, uh, Vivek Ban joined us uh, for the ABU business, and he is currently responsible for analog and power business. So Vivek Ban, the two of us, will be uh, uh, explaining the automotive strategy. So please bear with us till the end. Now, first of all, I would like to talk about the progress update regarding the main product for the ABU, which is the MCU RH850 and SOC Argar Gen 3. This is the latest product of ours. So I'd like to talk about the progress of revenue of these two products. The right, right, left-hand side, RH850, uh, Gateway, Domain Control, XCB, ADAS, those are the major uh, growth areas. And uh, for all these uh, areas, we have achieved a significant growth. Um, RH850, uh, we started off from the 80 nano product, uh, 40 nano product. And then on top of that, the 28 nano new product is now being launched. And then um, the number of content growth per one car, especially in the growth to applications, the adoption rate is increasing. And in fact, the number of units per one car is also increasing. Therefore, with all these synergies um, being delivered, um, the market growth, according to analyst data, the gateway and also ADAS is expected to achieve a KGAR of 12 to 15%, XEV 20 to 25% is the analyst consensus, but we have been able to achieve a KGAR higher than that. Then the right-hand side, the R car Gen 3, uh, this is the third generation of SOC. Again, for here, um, this uh, shows the timing of new product launch and the ADAS and cockpit have been achieving a significant growth. And most recently, new gateway, central computers in this area, we have been able to secure design in. So therefore, this is expected to lead to further growth in the future. Of course, uh, this year, again, the demand is expected to continue to be strong. And uh, for RH 850 and R car Gen 3 up until now, and also continuing this year, uh, the revenue for these products this is uh, confined by the actual supply constraints. So we have not been able to fully catch up with the demand growth. That is the current situation for these two products. Now, next page. So here, I would like to talk about the growth uh, pillars for the ABU business unit. Uh, first and foremost, if you look at the upper left, the emerging market, uh, emerging OEM, the emerging regions. We will focus on these uh, high growth areas, especially when it comes to XEV, Tesla, EY, BYD, all these uh, new OEMs are now increasing their number of units sold uh, at an astonishing level. So in line with their growth, we would like to expand our XEV business. Secondly, the EE architecture, ADAS, and also XEV, those are the emerging applications. We would like to focus more on this uh, opportunity so that um, the we would like to achieve growth higher than the automotive market growth rate. And uh, uh, <clears throat> the last piece, including dialogue, Intercell, IDT, and also uh, dialogue with all these effects of acquisitions and our power uh, portfolio has been expanded. So the digital products, that we have been always strong with, uh, Micron, MCUs, and the SOCs, we would like to offer a winning combination so that we can uh, win contents and thereby achieve our revenues and also market share. So um, with all these three pillars, I would like to deep dive into each of them. Next page. This uh, relates to our growth for the emerging customers and emerging regions. So. Uh, the in progress and the revenue growth has been, are presented here for the design ends last year because we have established a, a dedicated team. So as a result of that, we have been able to achieve a significant growth in design ends. Consequently, if you look at the mo middle part there, the future revenues based on certain assumptions, based on the DE numbers, we are able to translate into the revenue growth expected for the future. So as you can see there, for revenues, 
we are by far overwhelming the market growth rate uh, in terms of our revenue uh, projections based on the D in progresses. Next page, please. Next page, please. Yes. So, for the strategy for these emerging customers and region, there are four major pillars from I'll start from the upper left. Um, winning combo, especially when it comes to XEV, reference designs and also uh, turnkey solutions. We would like to uh, make uh, achieve such kind of evolution so that we can expand our port product portfolio. And uh, two wheeler EVs is also increasing uh, in addition to four wheelers. So, including that opportunity, we would like to expand our uh, business here. And if you look at the uh, left hand bottom uh, markets, uh, China, India, and Southeast Asia, and of course, US, those are the new OEMs there. And of course, IT platforms are now coming on board. So we would like to target them and expand the scope of our uh, customers. Of course, what is good about them is that these customers are quite fast um, in terms of translating into actual sales. And rather than prices, they focus more and attach stronger importance and time to market and also the supply. Therefore, uh, this uh, translates into uh, faster revenue growth and improved uh, revenue uh, uh, gross margins. So uh, we expect these benefits from by addressing these opportunities. Now, upper right, uh, because these are the new emerging markets and therefore um, the orientation of these customers are therefore different. So new business models, new services and new products will have to be uh, uh, provided to them. Just an example, risk five based products, for example, as well as cloud-based software services, those uh, environments should be provided. That's another focus area. And the last one, uh, bottom right, um, startup mindset uh, uh, organization was uh, set up as a dedicated team, as I just mentioned earlier. With this uh, new team, we would like to catch up and agilely uh, respond to the speed of the new customers and expand our business as a result of that. So the next page, uh, EE architecture, how do we respond to this market? The in and revenue growth are presented on the, uh, uh, the slide here, design ins the central computers and gateways, uh, these SOCs, uh, we have secured all design ins and also the domain control MCUs. So SOCs and MCUs, by expanding the product portfolio, we have been able to achieve a significant increase in DINs. In 2020, the SOC uh, major platform DIN was secured, so uh, 2020 numbers is outstanding, but uh, in 2021 as well, we have uh, over, we have uh, been able to achieve a favorable increase compared to 2019 level and uh, favorable growth is uh, expected for this year as well. So therefore, as a result, the revenue growth projected to, for the future is going to be larger than the market growth. Now, in concrete terms, for uh, the, the measures that we have to implement for the EE architecture, that is uh, explained here. If you look at the left-hand side, one of the strengths of Runesas is that um, the SOC, MCU, and analog power. So we have a broad uh, portfolio of products. So especially when it comes to EE architecture, if you look at the uh, car picture there, uh, central zone and actuators, um, all these different ECUs, uh, domain ECUs, hand raise ECUs, and actuators ECUs, and sensors and actuators. For those opportunities, we can provide many different uh, uh, total solutions, a total solution. So what is important here is that uh, customers' uh, uh, reusable software reusability and scalability will have to be enhanced by providing development support. And of course, if you look at the left-hand side, safety, security, IP, across different uh, products, we have a common structure there. And also when it comes to winning combinations, including analog, we provide a, a total solution for our customers. And furthermore, recently, and of course going forward, we are trying to expand our capability at the bottom there. Traditionally for each ECU, different development environment uh, was provided. But nowadays going forward, we would like to um, have a unified development environment across many different ECUs. So if you look at the right-hand side, based on that, we will provide many different tool sets, driver, middleware, framework, and applications. 
So we would like to expand the portfolio of so uh, softwares so that the software and defined cars and software defined architecture of our customers can be supported through our system level integration. Meaning that the customers, the, they will move from the ECU uh, specific optimization to a broader uh, optimization for the entire car. So in relation to this, uh, the collaboration uh, press announcement uh, for this environment was uh, made just yesterday. We made a press release yesterday. Uh, now talking about the ADAS market here, designing on the far left, first and foremost, our central ADAS and also camera SOC and safety uh, uh, MCUs. By expanding our product portfolio, we have been able to achieve a significant increase in DEN, just like the EE architecture in 2020. Uh, hundreds of billions of yen of project DEN was secured. So 2020 numbers is outstanding, but even for 2021, we have achieved a significant increase compared to 2019 level. So this will uh, result in a revenue growth by far exceeding the market growth rate in the future. So as for ADAS, the uh, additional initiatives that we are planning to con uh, implement, if you look at the left hand side, uh, traditionally central ADAS camera and uh, MCUs, as well as the uh, related peripheral H AHL and other uh, uh, camera interfaces and PMIC and timing ICs. These have been the uh, uh, products that we offered for the ADAS market in the, in the past. But now, um, if you look at the level two on the left-hand side, the R products, uh, uh, benefits was the uh, low power consumption that, uh, and also the major tier one uh, collaboration, strong footprint among them. Then on the right hand side for the next solution in the future, with the acquisition of IDT in 2019, ever since we have been able to offer the state of the art RF28 nano and RF CMOS. So with this uh, low uh, power consumption, low noise, low noise uh, radar uh, analog products, have been expanded centered on this RFC uh, MOS uh, product. So for the central camera, the radar is added. So the Fusion, Fusion enabled total solution is now going to be expanded for the future. So uh, if you look at this uh, chart on the right hand side, level three, of course, in a few years time, the uh, industry will switch to level three. So um, the, with our composition of products, SOC will be more advanced compared to before, and also the camera uh, numbers will increase further, and the radar MMIC will be also be added, and uh, compared to before, four times as many uh, content growth is expected for the future. Therefore, in the ADAS area, um, we'll be able to achieve a, a growth rate higher than the market average. That is our plan. Now. From here, I would like to uh, talk about the EV market and uh, uh, the strategy will be explained by Vivek Ban. Vivek, please uh, uh, take over. Thank you. Thank you, Kotoka-san. Uh, good morning, uh, Ohio Gazamas. Let me take the opportunity uh, to explain the growing and expanding presence of Renaissance in the EV market if you look at design ins, uh, we have seen a very strong opportunity pipeline and a very strong momentum to secure design ins. Relative to uh, 2019, in 2021, we achieved design ins that were 420% uh, to the 19 levels. As far as revenue is concerned, we expect EV revenue to grow significantly uh, from where we are today at a healthy CAGR of 40% and significantly contribute to the expansion of revenues uh, for our automotive business. As we all know, the market for EV is growing at a healthy rate of, of 25%. We at Renaissance anticipate that our growth will be a lot faster than the market uh, based on the products that we are bringing into this space. When I talk about products, uh, not only the strength in our digital and MCU space, but also our growing product portfolio for analog and power. As we look at the, the products here, uh, Renaissance has invested uh, and we are very excited about our broad product portfolio. In fact, we believe in the market today, we have one of the broadest and most diversified 
product portfolios within our competitive space. With that broad portfolio, we expect our content to increase in EV solutions. Uh, and we also expect that our products and silicon would be used in multiple places. And a lot of these products are also used many times within a single system. With the investments that we have made in the past and also the acquisition of Intercell, IDT, and now Dialog, we have a very rich portfolio of products uh, that we can offer in the EV space, which very well complement what Renaissance was previously offering with MCUs, SOCs, and power solutions. Specifically, uh, in analog and connectivity, uh, we see a lot more opportunities with the new products that we have. And overall, the serviceable market that we see uh, with the products that we have has expanded significantly. A quick comment on the power side, uh, power device side. Uh, we are actively uh, investing in differentiating our MOSFETs and IGBT solutions. We also recognize as Renaissance that silicon carbide will be an important technology for the EV market going forward. And we are evaluating and exploring options uh, to internal and external options to make sure that we are able to offer SIC based products in the future. Next slide, please. Further strengthening our broad portfolio is our focus on offering differentiation. We want to make sure that we are achieving best in class performance. Uh, we are performing well against the key indicators for a product line. A uh, very strong focus on improving cost competitiveness on our products. Uh, we are working uh, diligently to make sure when those products are put together in a system, we are able to highly optimize the system and deliver those products uh, as fast as possible. Starting from the left side of this slide, uh, in the analog space, we believe we have a portfolio which establishes some of the best in class analog offerings for EV. For example, uh, we have very highly precise battery monitor circuits uh, for the battery space. For the growing sensor space, we have developed very sensitive and accurate position sensor devices. Complement that with our connectivity solutions that we acquired through Dialog and Seleno recently, and also other analog solutions that we can put together to complement our other offerings. We have a very broad portfolio of analog devices for the EV market. In addition to that broad portfolio, we're also very focused on scalable analog, where we are offering solutions based on the type of application that it is getting integrated into. Scalable battery cell monitors based on number of cells that are integrated in a particular application, or it could be scalable functional drivers, gate drivers based on the type of current and device strength that we need to support. In addition to that, in our analog space, we have more configurable and flexible parts to help our customers with flexibility as they evolve their solutions. In the power space, which is also power discrete space, very exciting uh, area for us also, we are continuously adding differentiation to our products, making sure that our power solutions have the best efficiency, best thermal performance, best packaging, uh, and the best power consumption possible. There have been investments done recently and will continue to happen to improve our IGBT offerings as well as our MOSFET product lines. As I mentioned before, we do absolutely see the importance of silicon carbide and GAN in the EV market going forward. And through partnerships and other uh, decisions we take, uh, we will share in the future our plan on how to service the growing silicon carbide market. In addition to analog and power, uh, our digital continues to be our strength. We are offering optimized digital solutions, which are scalable based on the application. As was mentioned by Shivarasan, software is also very, very important. And we are focusing to make sure that our software is delivered along with our hardware and the combination of soft software and hardware provides the best optimization for our customers. Wherever relevant, we also have specialized IP, whether it is for AI, 
or for security or for motor control that we integrate within our compute engines. With a combination of our analog power and digital capabilities, along with our strong focus to improve our methodology and focus on reliability and functional safety, where we have always received very good feedback from our customers, we are in a great position uh, to offer complete system solutions, integrating our digital analog and power content, and also enable fast time to market uh, for our customers with these solutions. Next slide, please. With the broad portfolio and the differentiation I talked about, Renaissance is positioned to succeed and offer complete platforms for EV applications. We have the capability not only to offer digital analog power and software together, but also make sure that the interaction of these products is optimized to offer the best system uh, performance possible. There are some examples of EV applications shown here, whether it is for traction inverters or onboard chargers or for, for battery management systems or even simple supplies for different sections of the car space. If I look at traction inverter, for example, we have the full lineup of what is needed for the system to be put together. We have all the products, whether it is taking accurate position sensing information that is processed by our MCU or having integrated IP for motor control inside the MCU or having power management IC that is driving the MCU with very strong understanding of the load and performance of the MCU so that the PIMIC can optimize the MCU performance or having scalable and a range of gate drivers uh, that are driving our IGBT and, and MOSFET devices or the feedback that you get from the, those power devices back into the gate drivers. That whole system uh, can be offered by Renaissance and is being actively optimized to give the best performance at a system level. If you look at quickly the battery management solutions, which is another area we can offer turnkey solutions, we have ASL qualified MCUs and battery management solutions. Battery management solutions, which offer highly accurate and scalable options. When we combine that hardware with our ability to offer application software, driver software, as well as specialized software that has a better, quicker understanding of the battery health, we offer complete solutions for our customers to integrate that in their products and, and go to commercialization as fast as possible. Next slide, please. With the, with the portfolio of products I talked about and obviously the focus on differentiation, we are absolutely expanding and accelerating Renaissance presence in the EV space. We see a lot of opportunities uh, to work with different partners around the world. And through our winning combos and reference designs, we are enabling those partners to adopt our solutions as fast as possible. Also with our winning com combos and our system capability, we are able to offer turnkey solutions and support, which is becoming very important for emerging markets and emerging opportunities in China, India, and other regions. In Renaissance, we are also very uniquely placed uh, based on our capability to validate complete solutions for digital, for analog, power, along with our software. We have test facilities in Renaissance which can put systems together and validate them for the right system use cases. We have troubleshooting facilities, uh, even our own demo car, which can integrate our advanced solutions to demonstrate the right performance. Also, many customers struggle with functional safety, quality and reliability. We have a very rich history and know-how to deliver in that space, and we continue to, to expand our capability uh, to uh, offer the best solutions possible to our customers. With the strong portfolio that I talked about, and also the differentiation that we are strongly focusing on, we are continuously investing to expand our innovation for EV. We are very, very focused to improve the cost of the total solutions that the customers can enjoy from, from Renaissance, and also to offer products for the lot of opportunities that we see in the EV space. We are continuously looking at increasing capacity 
uh, front end capacity that uh, Shivarasan and Shinkarasan talk about so that we can service those growing capacity needs in the future. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Now we would like to entertain questions. If you have a question, please click raise hand icon. We have Ishino-san from Tokai, Tokyo. Please unmute and please start your question. Thank you for taking my question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. About battery power management in EV, many batteries are to be installed per vehicle. That is the trend. And the competitor's analog device are increasing shares or they have substantial share as of now what is your market share and going forward i think that there will be a switch to wireless and through a series of acquisitions i believe that you are strengthening wireless capabilities but what is your advantage competitive advantage to the extent that you're able to discuss please thank you uh, vivek could you address that question Thank you. Thank you, Kotaro-san. And thank you for asking the question. It is a very good question. Uh, in battery management specifically, we see a lot of opportunity. In fact, it is one of our focus areas. Uh, you talked about uh, uh, our competition. We are aware of that. And we also are uh, working in partnerships to offer different kind of battery management solutions based on number of batteries that are integrated, number of voltage levels that are being desired by the market and at what current and an accuracy level. So we have clear differentiation in terms of our, our accuracy, in terms of monitoring, in terms of the software that we offer. And we expect uh, that we will be very successful in the battery management based on the opportunities and the feedback that we have received from the market. Also, you talked about wireless. Absolutely, there is interest in the market to, to deliver battery health to wireless communication. We have BLE, low power BLE solutions with low interference capability that can be integrated with our battery management solutions to offer a complete low cost solution that not only provides a very accurate and quick update of the battery health, but also reduces the amount of wiring that is needed within the car. From a market share perspective, we are small, but we expect that uh, uh, that is the case today. But based on our, our collaboration and designing activities, uh, we, will be, uh, uh, we will have a decent uh, portion of the battery management market going forward. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what is your target uh, in terms of market share? Market share target? I don't want to comment exactly uh, today on the market share perspective. We expect to be one of the leaders in, in battery management in the next uh, four to five years. Uh, we do recognize the up huge opportunity that is there. Uh, as I said, we will be one of the, the top players in this space, but I would uh, not like to comment on exact uh, market share today. Hi, arigato gozaimasu. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have already overrun the scheduled time to finish this meeting, so we would like to take the last question from the floor. So this will be the last question. Yamasaki-san from Nomura Securities, please unmute yourself and begin your question. Hello, thank you. This is uh, uh, Yamazaki from Nomura Securities. Just one point of confirmation. In the material, you said long-term, so you talked about the market projection and your revenue projection for long term. What is the time horizon when you mean what, when you say long term? And and my question after that is that for MCU market growth, 
compared to before, it seems that the market growth is accelerating compared to before. And I think that is the, one of the reasons for the uh, shortage of supply. So what is your projection pertaining to the number of MCUs per one unit? And also for the future EE architecture, when we shift to the new architecture, do you have to foresee any risks? So what is your projection on this matter? Okay, thank you very much for your question. I would like to answer, this is Kataoka, I would like to answer the, your question. The long term, we are talking about 2026 or 2027 as the time horizon. And then, uh, so based on that, MCU, as you pointed out correctly, we originally, when it comes to domain or when it comes to zones, the MCUs, I think the, per, the price per se will go up because it will become high end, but we thought that the number of quantity, the uh, quantity wise, it will come down up until a few years ago. But uh, the, the second page, I think is a good example. But in reality, um, this is just illustrative, but I think uh, um, content growth, it's often said that the eight to 20% growth for content per annum, but in terms of our RMCU, the market has uh, developed the faster than expected. So a 40% TEGA is the uh, market growth rate. So I think for some time, this kind of growth rate will continue. And then will this last forever? Like for 10 years from now, I, to be honest with you, cannot predict if that is going to be the case, but definitely with XEV and ADAS and Zone and the domain control, those applications are growing definitely. So for the next several years, I think this kind of growth rate can be expected. Therefore, um, this is not really a, a demand issue, but I think that we have actually um, determined this growth rate based on the supply capability of ours. But um, the inventory is also piling up to some extent. So that is uh, uh, an area that we have to pay attention to and carefully observe the trends. So we will keep an eye on that and then try to expand our business on par and at a comparable rate, at least with the market. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much.